And that's so great. So myself coming here together and seeing the luminaries that we are with here, it's in great indeed. And I'm happy that uh, we are having two speakers today and two scholars indeed. So if you have a question, definitely you can post it over there. If you can wait until the end, you can raise your head, of course, the speakers and, and myself and Geoff and Sebastian, of course, you are going to attend to your issue or to your question. So we begin. Our first speaker will be Meso, Meso Machuku Ezekafu. You get it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mr. Machuku is a kafu. I'm, I'm repeating for them. If you don't know the meaning of her first name, it means the godness, the godness or the god of goodness. Okay. And, and, and so this is the daughter that I talked with her last night or last, last yesterday. And uh, she's ambitious, definitely. She's willing and she has the ambition of going to be the president of one of the greatest. Uh, our largest economy in Africa, that is Nigeria. And uh, she's a pretty young girl, uh, studying in a Pattonville High School and a freshman of just 14 years old. So I'm damn sure she has the beautiful future of perhaps not only becoming the president of uh, Nigeria, but maybe even becoming the president of Africa because as uh, one of my scholars has just said in the beginning that Africa is a country. So join me in welcoming Meso Machuku as a Kafu. Thank Welcome. You so much. Thank you. Okay, so today I'll be presenting to you um, what we immigrants, we immigrants go through today, like in our daily lives and like the challenges we face and everything. So one of the things I'll be talking about is um, our biggest challenge as an immigrant. So uh, when I moved here, um, getting like, when I was growing up here, I got bullied a lot, a lot of times and everything. I got picked on a lot and like I had a, this made me um, have a lot of anxiety issues, something like that. And um, one of the biggest challenges that I noticed that most Africans go through is um, being bullied because of their culture, background and like their nationality, which I feel like it's very wrong. But one of the ways I've learned to uh, put that outside is um, by trusting myself because how I trust myself, I give myself like, I believe in my inner self and I give my time, I give myself a little patience and like understand what I'm gonna take and what I'm not gonna take. And one thing I've learned is like never to let anyone like put you down at all. And um, what I also do is that I also watch my thoughts a lot. Like I try not to compare myself. I try to make myself feel like, yeah, I am more than what they think. And um. I also oh, try to have faith in myself because um, one of the things I've also faced here, faced here is like my accent because like, yeah, my accent has really uh, been a barrier in some things that I wanted to do. Like I get, um, I used to get bullied a lot because of my accent. Yeah, that's a thing. And um, I've had to deal with accent barrier, but I really overcame it. And I've also had to deal with a lot of anxiety and fear and frustrations and disappointment. But I try not to give up in myself at all and like put my put my education first and everything. So another thing that's really helpful. So the another thing that's really helpful in this country to me is um education because like education it's really helpful. It, it eradicates hunger and also shows the importance of hard work. And I also want to thank uh, the V4A program, so for helping me a lot to join extracurricular activities and during the cold combat. I really like, appreciate them a lot and everything. And um, another favorite thing about me, about being an immigrant and out of being here is that I really love like, I really love the education system and everything. I love how the African community is like really outgoing with each other. And um, I also like, yeah, everything. 
about this country. And one thing I wished I had done differently. So I really wished, um, I really wish that I wasn't like, wait, let me, let me share my screen. Okay, so, oh my God. You're good. Okay. Okay, so this is, the, this is how, uh, this is how I trust in myself. I give myself a little time. How to trust in yourself is by giving yourself a little time and patience because you can't get everything you want and you might not get it how you want. But with patience, you can acquire whatever you want as far as you put your mind to it. And like you trust in God and everything. And like I said, I was really, I had um, anxiety issues. I had to uh, deal with um, being shy a lot. And like being shy a lot was not a good thing at all because like, I couldn't discover new things. I was always shy to do something and always scared of taking risks, which is like not good at all. And another thing, I, like I said, I try not to um, compare myself. I, learn, I have learned to dismiss negative thoughts and stay open to ideas that will help me move in a positive direction. Yeah, that's really helpful. And um, another thing is don't want too much. Desire can be a powerful motivating tool but wanting something too much can be very painful and very expensive. Seek your desire, but keep your integrity and believe that everything will come into place with time and God. So I try not to compare myself. Like I said, again, I try to like be contented with whatever I have. And um, faith, don't ever think that your case is different and don't wish to be like others because if you start to think like, like to think that others are better than you, you'll never move forward. Always put yourself first and yeah. And um, to me, what I have learned, what I have learned the hard way is fear, because like I now I believe that fear is like nothing. Like yeah, I have learned to overcome fear and take risk a lot. Yeah, I was either scared. Don't ever let scared fears get the best of you. Uh, I missed out on a lot of things because of fear. I was either too scared to take risk or too scared about the outcome. I learned to let go of fear by taking risk. So these are the challenges I've had to deal with. Like I said, accents barrier, but like I try to overcome it and like try not to let it pull me down or in a bad mood and everything. I've also had to deal with a lot of anxiety, fear and everything. But I thank God for my mom because like she told me the hard way. Like, yeah. And I've also had to deal with a lot of frustration. So one thing I've learned about America is that you are going to be frustrated because everything will come to you like very easily. It's going to come to you like in the hard way sometimes. So that's one of the things that I've learned. And then this is something about education. So another thing that's really helpful is education. It shows the importance of hard work. And that, like I said, I thank you, uh, Mr. Jeffrey for the V4A program. I have been able to like join uh, uh, extracurricular activities. And um, I really uh, recommend Code Combat for you because it helps you build your coding skills in a fun way and not a burning way. And you can pick your characters and you can also win its incentives. Okay, so these are my expectations when I get older. So this is me before I came to uh, United States and this is me after. I have a lot of dreams by, of what I wanna become in the future. Saying as for now, I wanna practice med medicine to study OBGYN or become a surgeon or even become a president, who knows? But I have more passion for medicine. I really want to be successful, hardworking in life. And one more thing that I'll encourage you to do is take your education seriously. And don't let anyone think, don't let anyone put you down at all because you're big. Don't ever let everyone, don't ever let anyone put you down at all. Yeah, and don't let anyone put, make you less of yourself at all. So uh, one more thing. So another thing that I that yeah, I, the store. Uh, one more thing that I uh, have in America, like I said, is uh, the ed education and everything. And I've made new friends and everything. And um, one thing I wished I had done differently. So I wish I didn't take, uh, I wish I, one thing I regret a lot is like, making myself feel bad at all times because of my accent and everything. And um, I also regret um, 
uh, letting the things people say put me down because yeah, that really affected me. And one thing I had wish I had done differently was like, yeah, like I said, accent barriers and everything. And um, yeah, and because of like the bullying I used to get, uh, my grid really dropped. Like it really did drop. So I really want to encourage everyone to never ever let anyone put you down at all because you're always the best no matter what. So with these few words of mine, I hope I'm able to convince you to be the best you can be. This is all I have for today. Wow. You give you a thumb up. Thank you so much indeed. We appreciate your hard work and uh, your presentation, you know? Thank you. It's indeed good. And uh, you, are giving, you are giving me the thoughts. I'm a young man, of course, but uh, you are giving me this thought that uh, if I have a daughter someday, you know, I would like her to be like you. Who gets the platform of sharing, you know, with the professors at this age? Mm -hmm. Now Thank consider you. if uh, by your 2025, perhaps you'll be sharing a platform with the national, international leaders, you know? Thank you. And so that's a very brilliant thing. So keep up. We appreciate you. We appreciate your brilliant mind. And I feel uh, you have challenged some of us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, indeed. If someone has a, a comment to or the cafe or a question or something, this is the moment. This is the moment. If you have a question, just ask. Yeah. 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 She's ready for that. Mm -hmm. I can see Jeffrey Santet saying that uh, those are very powerful words. Gary saying nice and authentic. Thank you. I have, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Um, did you have anybody that you shadow uh, who's a, a, gyne, a gynecologist uh, or a surgeon or who's into coding? Wait a second. Can you repeat the question again? Uh, do you have anybody that you shadow? Like um, somebody you go to their work and uh, you see what oh. they're doing? And mm. they no, I don't. But like in my school, I think they offer like uh, classes for that, I think. But yeah, when I get of age, I'm going to take those classes. But I do watch um, YouTube videos about most of those type of things. Yeah. Yeah, but I think I wanted to mention that uh, we, we just connected with her uh, and she's sharing her story. So uh, we, we, we have a mentorship program. So I've already reached out to a few people who we're trying to match her uh, with her to be her mentor. Oh, I, I see that uh, one of my friends that I met last week, uh, she told me that I should call her aunt, but here she appears as Mimi. Mimi, this is the opportunity, please have it. <laughs> Mimi, can you hear me? Uh, she's on mute. Okay. Yes, I can, yeah, I can hear you, yes. Perfect, go ahead. Yeah, um, uh, uh, what I can say is uh, you are such a strong young lady um, and Mimi is so proud of you. Thank you um, so much. Yeah, uh, don't give up, uh, keep going. <clears throat> you know, uh, the fact that you have accent it's because you speak more than one language. Um, People who don't have accent, <laughs> American, they speak one language. So if you speak more than one language, you are more smarter than them, you know. Mm -hmm. um, don't let anything push you back. Uh, what I can tell you is uh, the beginning is always difficult, yeah. but where you are going, you know that the light is, you know, going to shine. So, so much. Mm, so proud of you for what you are doing. Keep going on. Don't, even if they bully you, it's the way of making you strong, you know, yeah. because you need someone to push you for you to get where you want to go. If everything is easy, then you can't get there. You know, mm -hmm. you have to go through corners, bumps, everything. And I know that you are going to get there. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I, I think Mimi, you are wrong to tell me to call you aunt because what you are giving now is a mother advice. <laughs> <laughs> so keep up for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Abiola says, thank you for your advice, daughter. You are thank welcome. You. 
<laughs> yeah. Zekafu, thank you so much. I mean, there are a lot of people contributing and I think you have touched soul so far, okay? And uh, indeed, we would like uh, to hear you in more other bigger platform. This is the beginning, I believe, okay? okay. Let it be a seed that's going to nurture you to become a, a forest. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, sir. Indeed. Yeah. I think uh, that's all. Now, I have uh, an honor bestowed upon me, and I feel it's greater than my shoes. Because our next speaker is, uh, if you have read John Stenbach of Mice and Men, a character called George, uh, keep on saying, and everybody keep on telling him or asking him, do you guys travel together? And when he says yes, and uh, with his learning, he is stranger, another stranger that he cares from the beginning to the end. Uh, do you guys travel together? And then Small says, yes, we travel together. Everybody in the ranch, these are the guys that are working in uh, hard to mouth, daily jobs, they are hustling and uh, everybody is asking them, do you guys travel together? Because eventually it's clear that these guys are traveling together. They are strangers, but they are like brothers. So when I'm introducing this guest, I'm feeling that uh, this is the question that uh, someone should think of our guest today. Do you guys travel together? Why am I saying this? Because there are very few guys that, are tra that travel together nowadays in the lonely world. And uh, my first meeting with uh, Professor Musonda, I arrived here on uh, Sunday. In the less than 24 hours, Monday morning, I was in the school. Very strange in this lab. I didn't know anybody in the whole of Illinois, in the whole of the school. And uh, I'm there in the secretary's desktop and I'm introducing myself, my accent failing me, my stammering rising. And I'm trying to say I'm Solomon, the, seller, the secretary, uh, what do you say? And all of a sudden a certain gentleman appeared from uh, about five, 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 five meters away from me, you know, but ahead of me. And he's just looking at me, but saying nothing. I, I was just communicating with the secretary for about uh, three to four minutes. And all of a sudden the guy asked me, are you Solomon? And this is a very strange person that I have never seen. And I, I'm, I'm surprised. And uh, the secretary says, yes, 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 go. He, he is the, the chairman of the department. And at that moment, uh, I entered into the office with uh, Professor Mosonda and he ushered me the seat. And uh, he told me to introduce myself, of course, my stammering, my accent, you know. <laughs> but I was surprised that he knew me even before we met. I, don't, I didn't know how he knew my first part. It surprised me, and uh, as we talked, one of the things that I have never forgotten and one of the things that I shall never forget is that uh, in that less than five minutes, Professor Mosoda said to me that we secured a scholarship for you. We secured a scholarship for you. Whenever I say that, it's like a bombshell for me because when I was coming to this nation, I didn't even, I didn't know my right or my left, as Chinua Achebe says in his books. So it's my great honor and pleasure to introduce Professor Musonda. Professor Kapatamoyo reached Holy Grail of academia after becoming a full professor uh, two years ago. He obtained his BA in development economics and political science in University of Zambia, master's in communication and development studies in Ohio University and a doctorate in formation communication technology from Ohio University Athens. Recently, he added MBA, that is Masters of Business Administration from SIUE. As a young man from Mansa, Zambia, he's now the gentleman and the chair of mass communication department, Southern Illinois University. The founder of Atemi Corporation also sits on various cooperate boards like Illinois Lottery Club, Linef Salon Foundation. His technology prowess focus on the impacts of information and communication technologies 
and political economy. He is constantly building webs and web application from simple to complex designs. Just to tell you how he does this, last year when the COVID-19 struck, and all of, all of a sudden everyone was at lockdown, Musoda made a Madison curbside app. It's in the phone, even right now. You can get it, available in our phones, an online app that helps users find various business that offer both curbside orders and pickups of items such as food, snacks, clothes. So that tells you of a person that is in the platform right now. And I remember when he won a community human award some years back, one nominator said to the crowd that Kapatamoyo quietly and consistently contributes to his community as an active volunteer for initiative that benefits the elderly, the disadvantaged, the young, the ambitious, the newly arrived members of the community that is immigrants. Well, I cannot, that's the end of the quote. I cannot imagine a better word to describe a gifted scholar whose achievements have been recognized through various awards, a practical leader and a person who I know personally. Both, as I often call him, remains one of the very few genuinely caring and smartest people I have ever met. Vitedo for Africa is indeed fortunate enough to have the boss in the mentorship series today. And the president of the Zambian community is a very busy man, but always takes time with his students and are always willing to mentor others. Even when they are, they are not his own students. Today we are your own students, Musonda. It's such an honor for us to have you, Professor Musonda Kapatamoyo. Please have the mic. Thank you, Solomon. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Mm. Well, that was quite an introduction. Um, I'm going to make a few corrections. Solomon, that's very generous. You know, it almost made me cry there a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, to start with, I should just say this is uh, the privilege to be able to uh, participate. Uh, as the first speaker for 2022 uh, for the Momentum Series in the Vitendo for Africa, which I think is an awesome organization doing great things. Uh, but this is, this is a difficult speech to make because I'm following, uh, you know, a lady that uh, is a high roller, that uh, is going places, that made a very nice speech uh, herself and uh, is uh, very inspiring in the name of uh, uh, Mesa Machuku. Um, I think uh, the way you've uh, you approached life uh, is uh, the correct way to do it. And uh, as an African and as, as a parent, uh, I should just say I'm very proud of what you're doing and Thank just keep it up. So um, my task today is uh, to talk about, uh, you know, who I am and uh, how I've arrived at this point. Um, so Solomon has uh, given us an introduction. Uh, some things, uh, uh, are correct except one. Uh, I'm not the president of African community in St. Louis anymore. Uh, I used to be, uh, but not anymore. Um, we have a new president. Her name is Lily Blake. I but thought I'm, a soldier is always a soldier, sir. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, so basically, I'll, I'll talk about uh, you know as in, an introduction of uh, who I am and how I came up to be in this place. And then the challenges that I faced, you know, to be, uh, you know, just to be here, and the strategies for success, uh, because uh, part of this platform is to help the next person that's coming uh, after us. And then um, I'm sure there'll be some Q and A's at the end, uh, but I'm going to weave everything together in such a way that, uh, uh, you know, maybe people, some people can see themselves in my story as well. So uh, I was born in Zambia, um, which is in Southern Africa. Please, you can all mute so that you can have a smoother conversation. Yes, yeah, so I was born in Zambia, in Southern Africa, and uh, I did my uh, initial schooling over there, uh, my primary school. Um, secondary school and uh, undergraduate uh, college. And then um, 
I did some work for a little bit after my undergraduate uh, degree. And uh, after that, uh, got married and me and my wife, we came to the United States in uh, 2000. So we've been here quite a while. Um, I've seen several presidents. I came when Bill Clinton was president. Then George Bush took over after fighting Al Gore. So I was here for that fight. Um, and then of course, Barack Obama and then Trump and then Biden. So I've seen a lot of uh, presidents come and go uh, in this country. Um, so like I said, I'm married. Uh, we have two kids, uh, Malenga is our firstborn and then Milali is our secondborn. Um, firstborn is 21, uh, time really does fly. And our second born is uh, 14, he's a freshman as well. Um, I have hobbies, uh, not as many as Solomon and not as grand as uh, what Solomon does. But uh, I, I, like to, I like to run. Um, as a matter of fact, um, my uh, body can deceive people that I don't run that far, but I do run marathons. Um, in fact, I just had a marathon uh, November 14th in uh, Vienna, which is uh, Southern Illinois, past Carbondale. Uh, it was a nice one, nice weather. Everything worked out really nice. Uh, and I keep telling my friends that the marathon is 26.2 miles. And they're like, why are you doing that? Because it's a lot of work to, to do a marathon. But it's also a lot of work you've been trained to do a marathon. So uh, what it does for me is uh, it keeps me focused. Um, because I'm really busy with life and then family life as well and work uh, and other things going on. But the marathon is basically an event where you, you're competing with yourself. Um, so the training itself, waking up very early in the morning to go out when it's dark, uh, coming back when it's light, uh, spending hours by yourself uh, you know, on the bike paths or wherever, uh, that takes some sort of uh, passion. So I really like to do that. Um, and also some of my other passions are coding. So I'm happy that uh, Defender for Life is doing the code combat uh, to introduce the younger people to coding. Uh, I love coding. I build websites, I build uh, mobile applications and so forth. And as Solomon said, that has led to um, a part of my uh, money-making hassles or ventures because I'm involved in uh, two companies. One that I founded when I was a grad student is called Atemi Corp. Artemi stands for Africa Telecommunications, Electronic and Media Industries. And I had very grand ideas for that uh, company when I started it uh, during my master's. Um, and then life happened, uh, I went to do a PhD and here I am and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the other company I'm involved with is I co-founded uh, Social Local Mobile with a colleague in Glen Carbon here and uh, we built mobile apps. So the app that uh, Solomon referenced, Madison Curbside, uh, is one that I built uh, 2020 at the beginning of uh, uh, COVID-19 when everything was shut down and people didn't know where to go. So my app actually helps you uh, find which places are open and are selling uh, curbside. Uh, I was prompt prompted to build that app because uh, one of my colleagues in the Rotary Club, she has a shop in town and uh, because of the mandates from uh, the state, she was forced to close the store. And I kept thinking, you know, this store is not selling food, it's not selling anything that's, uh, you know, like dangerous in terms of health wise. Why can't she just sell outside? Because uh, if those of you that have lived in Africa, you know, we sell things outside pretty easily. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, some of the street vendors are selling things that are owned by the guy inside the store. They just give it to them to sell for the day and then you know, this uh, switch, uh, exchange money like that. So that was basically the concept for that. My other app with uh, S uh, Social Local Mobile is uh, called uh, Custody Transfer Log. And um, this one responds to uh, the divorce rates that we have in the United States that causes, uh, you know, parents to start uh, co-parenting or co-sharing children. And then if there's an acrimonious arrangement or people arguing and there's a court involved. The court wants to see a, a document that says uh, uh, when the child was brought to one party or vice versa. So my app does that. Uh, when you take your kid to a designated place, uh, you can log that uh, information. Um, so all the geolocation information and the images you want and all the metadata, 
and then in the end you can print that out and give it to the judge and the judge will uh, verify uh, those occurrences based on our app. So it's helping people in Madison County and all over the country and so forth. So that's uh, my hobbies and passion. Uh, about my career, I, uh, uh, I think it's been very non-linear, so to speak, because I, I've had many goals uh, that I wanted to do since I was a, I was, I was a kid. Um, one of the things I wanted to do, because I went to Catholic boarding schools, uh, was to be a priest, you know? Um, when you're an altar boy, as I was uh, for, I think I was an altar boy for close to 12 years, from when I was five to when I was 17. An altar boy in the Catholic church is uh, the little kid that helps the, the priest. So you're like the elf for the priest who is a Santa Claus in that regard. Um, so it was very alluring for me. I, you know, I wanted to do that. And of course, when I grew older, I went to college, uh, my passions changed and uh, I found, uh, you know, my wife and everything and uh, the rest is history. Um, but I also wanted to work in uh, nonprofits. Uh, in Zambia, we have a lot of poverty and uh, poverty is very glaring everywhere. If you're in the capital city, you'd see, um, you'd see the kids that are struggling to make ends meet or their parents are struggling to make ends meet. So there'll be street kids or things like that. Um, and then when you go out of the city, you see people that don't have uh, running water, they don't have uh, uh, good schools and clinics and stuff like that. So I joined an organization that kind of uh, helped me, um, you know, fulfill my uh, passion to help out. And that was Ruth Ramad Federation in the eastern part of Zambia in a town called Katete. So I was uh, merely 22 years old when I, when I joined those guys. And they gave me a little motorbike, the Honda 110 that I was riding around, uh, going to from village to village. And uh, that's the place where I could say I really became a man because uh, in that place, I saw uh, how people live. And uh, I was outside the comfort of you know, my parents' house. I was making big decisions myself, but that the decisions also impacted uh, an entire village of maybe 100 people, 500 people. Uh, so I was building wells, I was building uh, clinics, I was building clinic houses, I was building uh, school blocks and uh, for primary schools. I was also building houses for them, uh, doing agriculture projects. It was a lot of stuff that I was doing and I was riding this motorbike back and, back and forth. Eventually, I got a land cruiser. Those of you that have lived in Africa, you'd love that land cruiser. It's a, it's a beautiful pickup truck. It can go anywhere. Um, but they gave me a nickname in Katete. Mm. And uh, they used to call me Muzungu Wakuda. So Mimi will know that because she understands the chair a little bit. Uh, but basically what, what, means is, what it means is uh, uh, a black white man. And when uh, this man told me, his name was Mr. Banda, he says, oh, Kapatamoyo, you're Muzungu Wakuda. I said, uh, why are you saying that? He said, no, because uh, every time you promise something, you make it happen. So this is a place where people are promised things by politicians, by other NGOs, like, oh, look, we shall, we shall do this for you. And then nothing happens. Or they'll get to a point where they are told, oh, just organize bricks, organize sand, organize stones. I'll bring cement. I'll bring roofing sheets. I'll bring this and that. And nothing happened. And when the guys say that, I thought, wow, this just being diligent being truthful makes a difference. So after that, because they introduced now the concept of uh, Muzungu, I was like, okay, uh, what, why, why would the Muzungu be more trustworthy than the rest of us? Uh, that's when I decided to look into what it was about Muzungu that made them uh, different. Um, they were different in our organization just based on pay alone. Uh, so I could be paid, uh, maybe those days I was getting uh, 200 bucks a month, uh, 250, maybe a month. And uh, our expatriate staff would get $10,000 a month. So the rest of us who are doing the work are making less than 300 bucks a month. The expatriate staff are making $10,000 a month. So I became uh, somebody who was agitating, trying to understand why are these people getting so much money? And uh, you'd understand, the, of course, the reasons were like they're coming from far away, you know, there's no pension, so this is a pension. 
there's always a, a, a reason that's given for expatriate staff to take that much money in those places, including hardship. They're getting hardship allowance, right? Because they're living from different place, you know, um, into Africa. But one thing that wasn't different was the level of education. Uh, so I was thinking, you know, if I got a master's, I could be in this job. If I got a master's, I could be in this job. And that's, that became the goal. So I'm going to talk about goals later on, but that became the goal. If I get a master's, I'm going to be in this job that uh, Rosario is doing or that Martin van der Kran is doing and see if I can make that 10 grand a month, you know? Um, so I started looking for school. Um, the first grad school that I was going to go to was London School of Economics in the UK, but it turned out to be super expensive. So I didn't even go. And I had a friend that uh, had gone to, uh, he was from the US, he was a Peace Corps volunteer, and he said, you know what, what you want to study that's related to what you're doing work-wise, uh, you can do it at Ohio University in Athens, Ohio. So um, that was around maybe May. And I called up the guy who was the director of the program in May and uh, on the phone. And he said, oh, just uh, write me an email. So you're talking 2000 uh, emails where you, know, you have to go to the cafe or something. So I wrote him an email, what I wanted to do. And he said, okay, you're in. Send us your transcript, you can come. So uh, me and Mumba, we organized the visas and everything. And uh, we, we came on Labor Day, I think. So we were a bit late uh, for school by a week or so. Anyways, that was the start of my, what I'm doing now, but also it was the start of a new set of problems as, uh, as you'll see here in a little bit. But I went to high university and I studied the communication and development program. And um, at that point I was beginning to get very fascinated in technologies that make development work. Um, a lot of people take for granted the technologies that we have. For example, people will say, oh, everybody has a cell phone. Well, it's not really true uh, because if everybody has a cell phone, maybe there'll be no new ones being made all the time. So <clears throat> there's something called digital divide when not everybody has a cell phone. So if you're trying to communicate something, what's the best way to communicate to all these people? So when you take that program, you begin to see different ways to use different technologies to reach different people. And uh, the problem that was small now becomes really big. So that's what I studied. And uh, for my PhD, I went into the telecommunications uh, college um, or program. And I studied further information and communication technologies, uh, focusing on basically what satellite technology was doing for our development and so forth. Um, it, to me, it's very fascinating that you have this object that's put out in a geosynchronous orbit up in space at a certain level and it just loops around the earth and is able to transmit all this information around the world. That was very fascinating to me. And I studied that and uh, wrote about it a lot. Uh, at the mentor that was uh, actually the journal editor for the satellites journal. Uh, so I was able to be helping on that. And <clears throat> that's how I ended up with a PhD from Ohio University. And I finished that in 2006. Uh, 2007, I got a job here, um, and I've been teaching at SIU since then. My job, uh, when I came, I was hired basically to um, help uh, boost uh, what was uh, called uh, digital, li digital literacy, and their interpretation in the department was that everybody, all our students coming through the program should learn how to do websites. Now, mind you, um, and this is an immigrant story, I didn't go to school to learn uh, web design. I learned web design on the site because I just loved it. In Zambia, when I was a little kid or teenager, whatever, we used to do MS-DOS. So you go to Findeko House, which is uh, the tallest building in Osaka. And by tall, I mean it's uh, 22 stories. So you go there and there were certain places you'd study MS-DOS. That's why I studied my MS-DOS. When I went to do work uh, in Katete in the villages, that's when we were getting email and I was able to help set up email for my organization and for UNICEF and for St. Francis Hospital. So I became good at networking uh, computers so they can be on the internet. And this skill kind of helped me. Uh, yeah, MS-DOS, Geoffrey, that's what it was. Um, 
helped me uh, start off a career in, as a grad student. Um, so I've been teaching it since 2007. Uh, I've been through all the ranks uh, that they are. And uh, right now I'm a full professor. So um, for younger people, uh, like uh, Mr. Machuku, when you start uh, in academia, you start as an assistant professor after your PhD for six years, probation basically, because um, they're filling you out. And in that time, you're doing a lot of research, a lot of publishing, a lot of conferences and things like that, which I did. After six years, you get a promotion to associate professor, also a minimum of six years doing the same thing of publishing, research, uh, conferences and service and good teaching, uh, you get good teaching evaluations. After that, um, if you want, you can apply for a full professor, which I did, and I got that um, <clears throat> after six years of being associate professor. So I've been here for 14 years so far. Um, but in academia too, we have uh, administration and uh, my friends thought I'd be good for administration in the department. And uh, I was elected chair for my department uh, in 2018. And uh, one of the things that uh, I focused on uh, when I became chair was to change uh, the culture so that uh, people are nicer to each other. There's more empathy because I'm very, I'm a very empathetic person. So I wanted that to come through. And the other thing was to change uh, our facilities. Uh, so in that regard, I have uh, been sourcing a lot of money for this department uh, in excess of uh, almost 400,000 at this point. And uh, with that money, we've built uh, or refurbished three labs, one for audio production, where we teach students how to do podcasting, another for video editing, where kids, uh, students can go do their uh, film, uh, you know, media production and whatnot. And then uh, <clears throat> uh, we have uh, a multimedia lab, that's a Mac lab that has a lot of software. You can do Photoshop, InDesign, uh, Dreamweaver, and things like that. Um, I've also uh, revamped or refurbished the TV studio. We have a big TV studio here that uh, had uh, incandescent lighting for the last 50 years. And I thought that was not good enough. So um, I went and found um, $200,000 actually to redo the whole TV studio. And now we have LED lighting. We have big screen TVs in there. We have new furniture, new teleprompters, new audio board new backgrounds, things like that. So it's a very beautiful space and uh, it's driving our uh, enrollment and retention up. So um, I think we, we've done a great job as a department in the last uh, uh, four years that I've been chair just because of the goal setting and then the implementation part of it. Um, for research, I, uh, like Solomon said, uh, I like to basically look at the practical things of uh, communication technology. So I do research in how uh, communication technologies actually uh, help us. And uh, when I involve political economy, I'm basically looking at how they're diffused in the sense of uh, who actually pays for the technology, why are they paying for it? And uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of the, uh, the saying that uh, if you're not uh, at the table, you're part of the menu, so you can apply that to everything. So in this sense, in this case, uh, I'll give an example of an iPhone. If you don't have uh, somebody whom you know as part of the designers of the iPhone, uh, then believe, it, believe me, you're just basically a consumer that's part of the meal. So that's how come we get uh, technologies that are not culturally sensitive or that uh, are manipulative certain cultures or they're very expensive in the sense that you're just draining money out of your pocket into somebody else's pocket. There's a lot to study about these things. Um, then, uh, as Solomon said, um, the last uh, five years, you've seen uh, how data analytics has become a big thing um, in every industry. And uh, <clears throat> for me, I thought uh, my students ought to know about uh, data analytics from me. And uh, what I did was go and get an MBA in uh, business analytics. And with that, I designed courses here uh, in mass communications that basically do analytics. So I teach uh, uh, data analytics to mass comm students and uh, I also study and uh, <clears throat> make algorithms. So that's about my career and whatnot. Um, so
So some challenges, some challenges that uh, are faced. Uh, there have been several, uh, and uh, of course, uh, Mr. Machuku is going to face even more challenges as she, uh, you know, grows up. There are many challenges that are not unique to me. Um, one that's similar to what Solomon experienced was when I when I was a grad student. So I came from Zambia. I was a self-sponsored student because I retired from my job in the NGO and took a lump sum of my retirement, came here, and guess what? That money lasted three months. So what was going to happen the following rest of the time? Um, I had to find a GA, graduate assistantship. Coming in, I had no idea that, uh, I had no idea what a GA stood for in Zambia because nobody told me what a GA was, graduate assistantship award. I had no idea. So. Once I was in, in the US, then I learned about what this thing was. And uh, I was working on campus. I was very distraught because I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, and I saw the president of the college. And um, I went to him. I said, Dr. Gliden, you know, I'm from Zambia. It's my name. And I'm looking for a graduate assistantship because I don't have. And he says, well, you know, do um, you have any skills? I said, yes, yes, I can do websites. At this point, I have taught myself HTML, you know, I didn't learn HTML in Zambia, I just taught myself. And he says, okay, come on Monday, see Eric Perry. And uh, he told Eric Perry that to expect me on Monday. On Monday I show up and Eric Perry gives me a job and I became a graduate associate, not assistant, but graduate associate, which paid more money uh, in the president's office. And I worked there for six years during my master's and PhD. And my job was, uh, I was troubleshooting technologies for them. I was working on my Excel spreadsheets for all the programs that we're doing. And I was also uh, making websites and uh, maintaining websites for about 11 departments in the Dean of Student Affairs uh, portfolio, uh, for uh, institutional equity portfolio, diversity portfolio, women's studies portfolio, just all sorts of websites. Because again, people thought this was a big skill to have and were scared to do it, but I was not scared, so I did it. That's how I've come and paid for my education over there. Um, we had some challenges, you know, money was tight. And uh, my wife would tell you, you know, sometimes things were so hard, you don't know where the next meal is going to come from. So we did WIC, which is a women, infants, children program where you go to the uh, uh, health and family services, they give you some cards. So you take the card, could get some food at the local grocery store, you know, like peanut butter, milk, eggs, things like that. We did that. Uh, I did uh, about four jobs when I was a GA, uh, just to make uh, more money. I was working at um, I was working at uh, uh, the student center, which was called Baker Center, as a building manager. So, in addition to my 32 hours in the president's office, I was working another 16 hours um, in Baker Center. And the reason I was allowed to work that long was because we had a child who was injured at birth, and uh, the school fought on my behalf to give me what was called the work authorization document. And with that, I could work limitless hours. So other international students would work 20, 20, 20 hours maximum. I could work as long as I, I wanted because I'd fought for this document. Um, other challenges is just you know, knowing where to go and who, who to talk with, who to trust, and things like that. Uh, some strategies for success. Um, and by success, I mean just to get where I am, because I'm still trying to find myself, of course, uh, trying to do more for, with the resources that I have. Um, the first thing I would say is setting goals. Uh, if you have good goals um, and try to follow them, they don't have to be very, uh, like, uh, very high goals. It could just be something that makes you move from one place to the next. So setting goals has really helped me, writing them down and trying to implement them and following through. The other, other one is understanding parameters of where you are. So every situation is different. When you're a student, there's things that you have to do. So um, like Solomon is a student here, his job as a student is, is to study hard. In the beginning of the semester, they give you a syllabus, follow the syllabus, do what's on the syllabus and more, and you get a good grade. And what I advise people like Solomon and other international students is uh, when you come to the United States, make sure your GPA is above 3.6 out of four. 
consistently. And that, you know, 0.4 uh, allowance is basically, you know, if you get a B someplace or whatever, but make sure you have a 3.6 and above. Because if you're going to go for PhD, um, the transcript is going to speak on your behalf. And the way the, the reason that is important is because of the, the, um, the issue that um, Mr. Machuku actually mentioned, the name, when you have a different name, uh, like Musonda Kapatamoya, uh, Mr. Machuku is a, is a Kafo. People are like, ah, who's this person, you know? But then when you throw them a, a transcript that's 3.6 or 4.0 and the, uh, you know, 4.4 GPA, that speaks for you immediately. They'll be like, this girl, bring her in. So international students always should aim to have 3.6 and above because you don't come here to mess around, you know? Nobody's uh, is going to give you free food just because, you know, uh, they like you like consistently. You really have to get that on your own. And as a student at that level, 3.6 and above is what you want to have because it speaks for you going forward. So those are the parameters at that level. And this parameters thing continues in work. So I told you guys that uh, I was an assistant professor for six years. Uh, as an assistant professor, you're basically working, I don't know, 10 hours, 12 hours every day, pretty much doing research and writing. And so, so you can stay afloat and get tenure. Uh, that's a lot of work, but those are the parameters. If you don't do that, guess what? You don't get tenure, then you're back home and you're just complaining about everything. So knowing the parameters is important and uh, learning the, the limits of what you can do because that kind of brings you in and that kind of focuses your energy on things that are important, but also taking risks. Um, so America is, is large. I mean, there's just so much going on here in every sense. And uh, for me, I've taken risks uh, in business. I've taken risks in uh, nonprofits that I work with and so forth. Uh, and that's become very fulfilling for me. Um, the last thing about strategies is to seek help. Um, people are scared to seek help. And I'm not talking about help where you go beg people for things. No, I don't want you to do that. You don't want to be begging uh, and just reinforce people's stereotypes. Uh, I'm talking about things like mentoring. So that's why I was asking the young lady if she's a mentor, because mentoring basically uh, connects you with somebody who's been through what you're going through. And uh, you take shortcuts as a result because they tell you how to uh, get to the next step. So in that regard, I like mentoring. I mentor students here. I mentor uh, students um, for a Muslim um, organization in Columbus. Uh, so I go to Columbus and uh, speak, Columbus, Ohio. I'm part of the team that developed the mentoring uh, program there for refugee children. And I think it really helps when they have somebody like me up front telling them, oh, this is what you need to do, this is what you need to go, you need to speak to this person. And uh, mentoring, for those of you that are adults, uh, is an important thing that you can do to the next person coming after you. Um, lastly, no, second last is collaboration. Learn to collaborate with people um, because of course, being from Africa, those in my age, Amimi, Heta, all those guys from Zambia, you know what we say there that uh, two heads are better than one. That is a fact, you know, when you collaborate with people, you get more done. Uh, but then last but not least is uh, be yourself. So I tell students when they come here and, uh, I basically force myself on them to be their mentor, but I tell them to be themselves. You know, Solomon would, would agree and other kids, other students would agree. Because when you come here and you start, I tell them, you know, don't be fooled by the lights. And by the lights, it's a, it's a Zambian expression basically, meaning, you know, like things is flash, things are flashy or whatever. Um, I've seen people come here as students and then they just get involved in wrong things. You know, start, uh, gun toting because they think that's what people do. Uh, start uh, gang banging because they think that's what people do. Dropping out of school or hustling less because they see other people getting, uh, getting by without uh, you know, working really hard. And you can get distracted and lose your way. You lose a lot of time, lose a lot of money and you get frustrated. Um, then those are my strategies. But the last thing I'll say, uh, just in general to everybody is um, we have to represent Africa well, because you know we only have one home which is Africa, 
And uh, even our friends who are African-American are called African-American for a reason because uh, they are part of us, you know, we're part of them. Uh, their roots are in Africa. And if we don't do good by the continent, we continue these stereotypes. And believe me, the stereotypes about Africa really uh, undersell our capabilities as individuals, because you have people that look at you and they're like, oh, he's from Africa, he probably can't even do that, you know? Um, but also on the macro level, we undersell ourselves on investment. Investment going back into Africa is less because people with money will be like, I'm not gonna take my money, that's very unstable. But which place in Africa is unstable? You can count five places that are unstable, that don't, that where you go and you'll be unsafe. The rest of it is just, people don't, just don't know about, you know? So you have to represent that story very well all the time, wherever you are. And how you do that is getting involved. You get involved in different places. You hang out in the community uh, events. Uh, like in the Zambia community, we have, uh, you know, events where we cook, eat, whatever, and invite Americans to come and see what the Zambians are like. But since I, I talk a lot, I go to wherever I'm invited, you know, Kenyan ones, uh, Ugandan ones, uh, I just go, you know, we have to represent the continent really well. We don't have uh, anywhere else to go home but Africa, and it's incumbent upon us to bring the good stories. And uh, that's, that's from an individual, as an individual, you do the best that you can. Um, and then, at the macro level, we speak for the rest of the continent. Um, so basically, uh, I could talk forever, but uh, I think I'll stop here because I was given uh, 25, 30 minutes and uh, I'm at 25 right now. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, that's so great. Can someone who are visual, can, can they give Professor Musoda Adamba, like justice, yeah, that's just wow, Professor, keep up for that. You know, when I was seven years old and uh, I was a stammerer, a very terrible stammerer, my, my grandfather said to me that to speak and to speak well are two different things. Musonda, you have spoken well. And uh, I think in the United States, everybody want to talk like you. So keep up for that. And uh, what many people may not know is that uh, I, I discovered that uh, Professor Musoda is a, a kind of a celebrity in SIUE. I mean, every international student is looking for Professor Musonda. Those who come from Zambia, as who, who come from Kenya, those who come even from Nigeria, you know, all over the continent. Whenever someone got a problem or has a problem is looking for Professor Musonda, they just believe that, you know, their problems will be solved by that. But that's the essence of just having the only African in the entire school as the chair of the department, you know? It makes you even proud that when I go to the class and I'm the only black guy there, you know? I, I remember the, the, one of the students asked me, oh, oh, you come from the same country from Professor Musoda? You know, they think Africa is a country. And I proudly said, yes, 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 yes. So we are proud of you, Professor, and uh, for all things that you have been doing to us and uh, your input today here, indeed, it's great. And uh, part of uh, the leadership in Vichado for Africa, such as Geoffrey and Ted, you know, we are indeed grateful to, to have you. So this is not my time, it's time for you. If you have question, you can post it there. If you can raise your heart as well, this is the moment. I, I'm reading the post, you know, the comment, Professor, and uh, some are saying that I admire your unique cultural diversity Africa brings to the world. Uh, that was a powerful prof, prof, prof. I could listen to you over and over. You spoke to my heart. That's Geoffrey Sanchez, our captain, our CEO and the president. And I'm thinking perhaps Geoffrey, we did wrong. This guy deserved two hours. Unmute yourself. <laughs> I said that is true. We need more time for him. He deserved two hours, not 25. Oh no. Mimi Singh's well spoken brother. Yeah, if you have a question, you can ask Prof. You can raise your head, you can post it. Hmm? Maybe my question go that I have. I have uh, the question that I have for Prof. And congratulations, Professor. That was awesome. I 
I'm an alumni of SIUE. I did my MBA there. And yeah, I know you won't remember this, but I think in 2008, you were pretty new there, but you signed a, a good document for one of us that helped us not get kicked out of an MBA program. Uh, that's a story for another day. Uh, not that we were doing, not that we were doing very badly, neither were we doing very well, but we survived. Um, so my, my question to you is, uh, what um, I think the, the industry that you are, and that's where Solomon is, is always a challenge for most of immigrants. And I think part of it is uh, probably the language or the accent and the intention most of the time people think of them landing jobs with one of these media, you know, media industries, you know, with CNN, NBC. What are some of the advices that you have for most of our kids that are interested in these industries that you feel is the hindrance to, to, to what actually they, they aspire to be, especially in the area that you have actually prospered in? Yeah, um, that's a good question, actually. Um, so for me, um, when I was coming through grad school, I had two options. One of them was to go uh, non-academic, the other was to go academic. Uh, if you want to go academic, of course, you have to get a PhD and then, uh, you know, go through the rigmarole of uh, getting tenure and whatnot. Uh, but if you go uh, non-academic, there are many jobs with uh, media studies or mass communications degrees. Um, some of them are in nonprofits, uh, like the UN jobs. Those are very big jobs. You can travel the world just being a communications director from place to place. And uh, I've seen that with some of the colleagues I came with that went back to Africa. They are working in South Sudan, working in, you know, Darfur, places like that, and making a lot of money um, and living really good lives. Uh, but also you can work in industry like uh, private corporations. Uh, private corporations right now are looking for, for people that, for example, can do analytics. And we teach analytics here. So we teach uh, social media analytics. We teach, uh, like I said, I do... Uh, uh, APIs where my students could make an application program interface that's pulling data out of Twitter or Facebook and then mine that and then create themes and patterns. Companies want that for themselves. Um, so um, I haven't seen many go like up front in, in front of the camera, but we have a lot of jobs in the back of the camera. We have people that uh, are stringers, you know, in the camera world or uh, video editing in the cam uh, with um, one of Solomon's friends, the Indian guy, who is uh, now making movies, you know? So he's, uh, <clears throat> we teach all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of uh, activities you can do uh, in the, in the, the industries are really big. Uh, you might not be Anderson Cooper. And as you've seen nowadays, not everybody that's actually in front of a TV is trained uh, in journalism or mass communications or media studies. Uh, everybody can do whatever they want in front of it, but to get good quality content, you need somebody with our, coming from out of our program. So there are many jobs and um, I spoke about mentoring. That's the reason why I like to mentor students because I want to see where they are, see what their goals are and then I can direct them properly and uh, help them find the, the niche that they, they can be comfortable with. Oh, th that's Thank indeed you. very good. Uh, so Sebastian, thanks uh, for that uh, question. It's a very, a thoughtful one. Uh, do we have another question? Can have the floor, the mic. Please feel free to post your question as well. In a comment. I see one of my friend is here and my old friend. Pastor Sam, are you there? Yes, 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 I'm here. Aha, uh -huh, my good friend. Of course, there's something. This is <laughs> <right>. my professor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So first of all, I just want to congratulate both um, both uh, speakers, even the young lady. She did such an amazing job. And I just mentioned that, uh, you know, whatever she shared about what she went through, the bullying part and all that, she has already, um, uh, she has already gone through the bigger handles of life. So the rest is going to be easy for her. And uh, for the professor, we do know that we actually have very accomplished professors like Musando, Musanda. Uh, we, know, we know a few of the Kenyan uh, professors, but I'm very, very encouraged even to know that he is a, a, a department uh, 
uh, head there and this is very very encouraging it encourages uh, the rest of us who are trying to do something in the society or in the the academia world that you know there is still hope there is still hope i did uh, um i wanted to relate to what he has been doing many uh, mentoring uh, young people and helping uh, when i went to wash you i did my masters on social work in washington university um I, money was very scarce. I was very new coming from Kenya and uh, I didn't have enough resources. Um, and I went to one professor there, a Kenyan professor, a Swahili professor. And uh, I told him, you know, I need jobs. And he said, wow, I'm looking for somebody to help me. And uh, before I knew it, I was teaching Swahili. I was learning a lot of Swahili because Kenyans are not very good in Swahili. Um, and for one year, I was actually teaching, and I remember one semester we did together. The next semester, he asked me, I asked him to help me. Uh, I asked him about the, the what kind of a syllabus I'm going to use. He told me, you are all on your own. You know, you've seen what we do, now do it yourself. And I did it, and, you know, he told me, you just need to teach well and get some good evaluation from the students. But anyway, I was very happy as a student. I was able to make money that way. And I also met another professor who asked me to be his uh, assistant um, researcher. And so what our professor here, Musanda, is doing is, is so incredible because people like Solomon and others will never forget that. And that also challenges other people like us who are in our own professions to be able to mentor more people, not just one or two, but to what I, I encourage me to do is to do more of mentoring so thank you so much um i lead a non-profit organization called pipes international it's a christian organization i do a lot of work in kenya i know i've mentored a few people but i need to do more thank you very much thank you so much brother thank you indeed for your commendation to my professor and to a professor <clears throat> what he didn't actually say is that uh, he is also a pro in a uh, automobile car fixing he mm. doesn't take it you know outside he does it by himself that he didn't mention, but he's a pro in that. Very gifted, yeah? Yeah, very gifted, man. Mm. So at this juncture, uh, maybe I can introduce our president, you know, Geoffrey Santet, our captain. Huh? Say something, and of course, you know, if he has a comment, uh, he can have it and uh, he can post it all. I mean, he can express it and, uh, of course, give thanks to us all. And especially to the main guest. Oh no! Thank you so much, uh, uh, our moderator tonight, uh, Mr. Solomon. That was that was good. You did a good job. I think uh, we 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 are also thanking our speakers. But uh, I I want to say that you also did an awesome, did an awesome job. Uh, uh, we should have you, and we are happy that you're part of us right now, working with us. Um, so thank you, thank you so much for that uh, great job that you did in moderating. Uh, like I said, I listened to the two speakers, and I think as Sebastian said at the beginning, this being the first event, but also uh, one of the best events that we have had uh, listening to these great speakers uh, sharing their stories and great advice about uh, and how we can be able to 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 navigate the American system as as immigrants. Uh, and I think uh, I like what uh, Professor Musonda said at the, at the at the end that uh, we really represent uh, the. The, the, the continent of Africa and the message we send out will either make people uh, change the narrative they have about Africa or we end up um, affirming what they already know, those stereotypes they have uh, based on how we present ourselves or we represent the, ourselves with the people that we interact with every day. It could be at work, it could be even when you're driving, it could be uh, a church or at school, uh, everything, every person you interact with. Uh, and even this great platform that you are here, uh, we are here is that uh, they, they, there is something that you will be able to uh, pass it on to them, either good or negative. And, uh, but I like that uh, what uh, uh, Professor have shared, but also our great speaker and our, our great uh, uh, leader, uh, uh, I, I was trying to get her name, Ms. Mechoku, for a great uh, uh, speak uh, and a talk. Uh, I was talking to her last night when we were talking, and I was telling her that uh, we're going to record her video today, 
because uh, in future we might be using it uh, when uh, when we when she is a senior person and we need to use this one to introduce ourselves to her <laughs> but uh, i am so happy to see that uh, we have uh, young people who are coming up and i think that mr musonda has said it very well uh, mentorship is our biggest actually priority in our programs and in what we do here because we know we have great people like uh, professor musonda uh, who has been there and has great heart to see that they see people who succeed uh, and those who are even coming after them. I think they say in Swahili, kinacho zaliwa ni kizuri kubiko kinacho za. Mm -hmm. Meaning uh, the people that we are mentoring, we want them to go beyond what uh, all this great accomplishment that our mentors have done, including what uh, uh, Professor Musonda, I'm trying to think about all these things that Musonda has done. And I'm looking at him, how humble he is. <laughs> and I'm, I'm really touched, I'm really touched. And, uh, I, I, I think if we had uh, uh, five of you in this, uh, in this community, uh, we will be different and our young people will be different. Uh, because uh, when I talked to, I was introduced to Musonda by uh, Solomon. And, and when he was sharing me all the things that you're doing over there, I'm like, these are the people who, be, who should be receiving all these awards and recognition that uh, everybody's getting around the area. But then when I'm listening to you here, like, no, I don't need that. I'm listening to you, you're like, my accomplishment is when I see great people, young people like Solomon, uh, being able to succeed in life and, and, and be able to impact uh, others. I think that is, that, that is, a, that is a accompli the, the recognition uh, or the, 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 the fulfillment that you get to see uh, all the international students who come there, particularly those who come from Africa that you're able to give them a guide, uh, a way to guide them away so that they can be able to be successful. And hoping that uh, when you retire, we will have uh, duplicated more Musondas uh, in, uh, in every community, I'll say, in every community here in St. Louis. So thank you so much uh, uh, for that. And also for all those people who've been with us since the beginning, all this time when we call, we invite you for this forum. Uh, we, we appreciate you because you never turn, turn down for this because we believe the information that we share, you will be able to use that information, not just to benefit yourself, but also to benefit those people around you and be a mentor. Uh, what like uh, Musanda said, be a mentor and, uh, and help others interact with those people that you meet. So um, I wanna say that, uh, um, I think I met, uh, okay, sorry. I wanna say that uh, we have our event that is coming up um, next uh, March 10. Uh, that is with the Delta, Delta sorority. That is a forum we're having uh, on the discussion. Uh, that is normally, the, we normally have to com conversation about the, try to address some of the, we call it bridging the gap between the African immigrants and African American. Uh, so on March the, 10th, we will have a session uh, and that will be, we'll be discussing about uh, the impact of COVID, uh, the impact of COVID in uh, African women. And uh, we invite you to be part of that conversation also to share your, 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 your part. So um, I see Judy, uh, I'm, I'm gonna reach out to you because I think uh, you, you might be a great resource on that conversation. Um, and, and then also we have another another uh, discussion that is also coming up in April uh, through the Links Incorporated. And uh, we will be also talking about some uh, other topics on related issues when it comes to uh, bridging the gap. Uh, please uh, keep on checking our social media. If you have not subscribed or liked our Facebook, Instagram, uh, uh, please do that. And then also, uh, check on our website uh, for our upcoming events. If you're there, like uh, we've heard from uh, Solomon and Professor Musonda, uh, we do have a mentorship program. And that mentorship program is where we help to match uh, immigrants, professionals in different fields, and then and, and those who are starting as early as middle school, all the way to college. Uh, and, 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 and I can't put it in a better way that 
what uh, Musonda has mentioned about the importance of the mentorship uh, and, and how much you can be able to impact uh, uh, with, uh, if you are, you'd be able to be matched with one of our mentors. Many of them struggle uh, because parents are not very much well-versed with their education. Uh, their friends may not. And the only hope we have is you as a mentor who is in doing very well in, uh, oh, I may have some experience, but also uh, may have some network that you can be able to, we can help them uh, utilize. Uh, other than that, I will say thank you so much. I will uh, keep you updated if, uh, if possible, please. Uh, uh, I'm going to put my number there just in case you don't have, uh, um, I don't have your contacts. You, we can add you on our uh, communication uh, data uh, so that at least you can be aware of when it's, our event is coming up. And also, I will also put my email so that uh, we can also add you on our database. Um, I don't know if there's anybody else who may have. Uh, Dr. Mudoni, I see you over there. I'm going to give you a minute. Uh, I, 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 wanted, I want to hear you as I type my email. Go ahead, Dr. Mudoni. I'll put you on the spot. You tend to do that, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I should know better by now. I'm so honored to, uh, to listen to the presentation tonight and just hearing your journey, uh, Professor from SIUE, it's just wonderful and really inspiring. Um, it's a challenge just to think of how we can, we can be, to live for others, not just for ourselves and, and how to constantly be thinking of ways to, to better the lives of those that we come across uh, every day. So I'm just really, I sat here and I listened and oftentimes I just was shaking my head. Um, it's wonderful. And to see somebody that is so well accomplished. Um, I taught at SIU Carbondale uh, for several years before coming to Webster. And I was just at SIUE actually a few months ago. Um, a good friend of mine was running, was applying for the president position. So we came there incognito and spent an afternoon just meeting students. Um, had I known that you were there, I would have looked for you. Now I know uh, the next time I'm out that way, um, that there are people that I should look up. Uh, but it's wonderful. Thank you very much for that inspirational speech. Um, Solomon, it's wonderful to see you again. Um, and you you always amaze me. I loved, I laughed when you talked about of mice and men. How does anybody come up with an example of from mice and men to introduce a speaker? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you are such an old, a wise soul in such a young body. Um, and I just love listening to you as well. And the words that you said at the end, every time I listen, I learn something. You said you, um, you, something about the difference between speaking and speaking well. Um, that, and I want to be the latter. I want to speak well when I speak, that my words will not be empty. It's not just for hearing, for me to hear my own voice. So on that note, I will shush. <laughs> <laughs> um, and leave it at that. Thank you very much. And the young lady, I can't stop before having said something to the young lady. Um, Nesoma Chuku, um, again, what, uh, what bravery and courage just to share your journey. And I am cheering for you. We're all rooting for you. And I cannot wait to hear um, of the greatness that, um, that you're going to claim that is awaiting you. Uh, you're such a brave soul as well. And I am just appreciative of, of hearing from you about your experience. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much. That was, that was powerful. I, 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 I'm always uh, grateful to hear you uh, you talk. And also every time you also, you've been part of a great uh, mentorship uh, for those who are asking about the mentorship. I think, uh, um, Dr. Madoni has been a great, great resource in our community. And I think last year he was, she was received at the mentor of the year uh, when we had our dinner. Uh, if you have a young person who is in middle school, let's say from uh, uh, sixth grade all the way to 12th grade, uh, please, please use my contacts there, reach out to me. Uh, we'll be able to add them into the program. Uh, I think, uh, uh, we mentioned, uh, the lady has mentioned about the coding program that we're doing. Uh, we have a therapy program that we're doing for those who uh, uh, we meet on Friday. And I think also uh, we're planning a trip to New York uh, from 13 year old to 24 years old. 
uh, if you are there, uh, we would want to get you in uh, part of that conversation that will be uh, uh, heading to New York sometimes in August. And, uh, and, and, uh, and I think Dr. Modoni uh, has been very grateful talking about the mental health, which is also a big concern uh, in our community. We will be uh, rolling out different programs that we can get your, your students or young people to be involved, but also for the adults to be involved and also providing an, uh, a contact. You can always reach out in case you need somebody to talk to. Other than that, I say thank you so much. And uh, I will um, look forward to see you again on March the 10th. And also uh, the date for the Building Momentous Picker Series, the next one, I think it is, uh, I can't remember Solomon, but I think it's sometimes in, uh, in May. Uh, we will share that for the next, and also we have two great speakers. Uh, we'll be sharing that details later on the email. Thank you, Dr. Msonda. Thank you, Nimesa Machaku, for great, great, great presentation. We, we, we can't wait to have part two of this, for the two of you. Thank you. Great, and uh, thank you to our great uh, uh, moderator tonight. All right, bye-bye.